please be seated.
Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, it is my pleasure to welcome you here to our cathedral, St. Mary the Assumption, for our annual Chrism Mass. Especially heartfelt welcome to our priests gathered from all throughout the Archdiocese and celebrating this Mass today, at which they will renew their priestly promises. And a special welcome as well to our deans and our vicars joining me here in the sanctuary area uh, celebrating this Mass. Special welcome as well to our deacons and their wives gathered today. Uh, we enjoyed a, a reflection, uh, afternoon of reflection, the clergy of the Archdiocese, as we seek to build up uh, unity in our church and the uniting of God's people for the proclamation of the good news. We have so much to be thankful for. Uh, let us remember as well our need of God's mercy. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus, omne voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicibus te, adoramus te. Yes, I can 
Let us pray. <coughs> o God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that, being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Lectura del libro del profeta Isaías. El Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí, porque me ha ungido y me ha enviado para anunciar la buena nueva a los pobres, a curar a los de corazón quebrantado, a proclamar el perdón a los cautivos y la libertad a los prisioneros a pregonar el año de gracia del Señor, el día de la venganza de nuestro Dios. El Señor me ha enviado a consolar a los afligidos, los afligidos de Sion, a cambiar su ceniza en diadema, sus lágrimas en aceite perfumado de alegría, y su abatimiento en cánticos. Ustedes serán llamados sacerdotes del Señor, ministros de nuestro Dios, se les llamará. Esto dice el Señor, yo les daré su recompensa fielmente y haré con ellos un pacto perpetuo. Su estirpe será célebre entre las naciones y sus vástagos entre los pueblos. Cuantos los vean, reconocerán que son estirpe que bendijo el Señor. Palabra de Dios.
of your face who find their joy every day in your name who make your justice their joyful acclaim forever A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found a passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing the gospel of the Lord. Renewable energy. The phrase has become a constant refrain in our time. And the search for clean and renewable sources of energy continues to amplify. But for all of the strides that have been made to wean our economy off of fossil fuels, it can still be said, like it or not, that oil is the lifeblood of our economy. The oil in this case, of course, is petroleum, and those not fortunate enough to drive an all-electric vehicle feel the value of it every time they fill up the tank, the proverbial pain at the pump. But petroleum serves as much more than a fuel. It is the raw material used in so many products that are part of our everyday modern life, everything from awnings to umbrellas. The lifeblood of the ancient world was oil too, olive oil that is. Jesus and his contemporaries used it for cooking, as we do, but it was essential to every aspect of life. It provided fuel for lamps so they could cast light and dispel darkness. It strengthened athletes, and athletes would spread it on their bodies to enable them to slip away from their opponents. It was used to heal wounds and it was poured out to anoint persons set apart for sacred duties. This all-embracing use of olive oil is at the heart of our celebration today. We bless the oil of catechumens, which is used to strengthen those who have entered into combat against evil in preparation for baptism. 
We bless the oil of the sick, which is used to heal those who are ill and also to prepare them for their final journey from this world. And we consecrate the sacred chrism, which is used to sanctify the baptized, confirm them in the Holy Spirit, and consecrate the priests of the new covenant. What is the source of the power in these oils to illuminate, strengthen, heal, and consecrate? It is the Holy Spirit, the gift of the risen Christ. Long ago, St. Ignatius of Antioch wrote, the Lord received anointing on his head in order that he might breathe incorruptibility on the church. The risen Lord gives us in these holy oils something that our world longs for. Indeed, even beyond what it longs for. Not a renewable source of energy that will eventually be expended, but an infinitely renewable source of energy. God's power to enlighten us, heal us, strengthen us, and sanctify us can never be depleted because it is infinite love. No matter how much progress scientists make in finding new, clean, and renewable sources of energy, every created energy source can last, at best, only as long as this creation does. Only love is stronger than death. Only love lasts beyond the grave and so is an infinitely renewable source of energy. To say that love is stronger than death reminds us that the energy given us from the risen Christ was tapped at a very high price. It came from his passion and death. The seer in our second reading describes the scene of Christ's return in glory, but he reminds us that the one who comes amid the clouds has been pierced. The oil of incorruptibility with which Christ anoints his church could only be produced by crushing the olives. The Lord's passion began in a garden, which reminds us of the very beginning of creation. But the garden of our Lord's agony was called Gethsemane, which means olive press. At the heart of our faith is the Paschal mystery, in which life comes out of death. When we look at what Jesus suffered, we see the mirror opposite of all the blessings we receive from the oils that will be blessed and consecrated this evening. Oil provides light, but darkness covered the earth during the Passion. Oil strengthens and heals, but we see Jesus slapped, scourged, and forced to carry his cross, and finally dying in agony. Oil anoints prophets, but Jesus was condemned to death as a false prophet. Oil anoints kings, but Jesus was crowned with thorns and mocked as the king of the Jews. Oil anoints priests, but Jesus was driven out of the holy city to die on a garbage heap. It seemed that the energy of love in Jesus had been completely exhausted with his final breath and the piercing of his heart. But his energy was not only human, it was divine. He told his disciples on the night of his arrest, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. The Father's love for the Son is greater than any created reality, more powerful than death itself. And it is this love that comes to us from the crucified and risen Lord. Our first response to this love is gratitude. That is why we bless and consecrate these oils during a celebration of the Eucharist. And what do we offer the Father to express our gratitude? The sacrificial death of his Son, which is not only the great act of divine love, but also of human love. His self-offering is both the Father's love for us and our love for the Father. This is why St. Paul teaches for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Like the oil, the wheat, and grapes that become the body and blood of Christ and must be crushed, once again, life comes from death. 
Our second response to the love God lavishes upon us through his crucified and risen son is suggested by an instruction given to priests at their ordination, but which applies to all of the Christian faithful, each in accordance with his or her vocation in life. Imitate the mystery you celebrate. We understand the Lord's commandment at the Last Supper, do this in memory of me, to refer not only to offering the paschal sacrifice of the new covenant, but the fullness of what that means, imitating Christ's total self-giving and love. We ratify our participation in Christ's sacrifice by saying to God and to our neighbor, this is my body given for you. Ignatius of Antioch understood this, traveling to Rome for his execution, he begged the Christian community there not to show him a, as he said, misplaced kindness by interfering. He told them in his letter he wrote to them, let me be the food of beasts that I may come to God. I am his wheat and I should be ground by the teeth of beasts that I may become Christ's pure bread. We gather in peace this evening to offer Christ's sacrifice. But many of our brothers and sisters come together, if they can, in circumstances of danger and persecution. Our hearts are heavy for so many of them across the globe who face grave danger and the threat of death and even torture simply because they believe. We think of the victims of wars such as in Ukraine and Gaza, Christians in China deprived of basic rights and detained in prison for standing for justice and freedom, or fellow Catholics in places such as Nigeria who are gunned down, sometimes even while worshiping in church because they maintain the integrity of the faith. With similar fates suffered by those in Syria and other parts of the Middle East, and closer to home is the crisis in Nicaragua in which the church is being shut down and bishops and priests sent away in exile, if not imprisoned. May our prayers travel to them and to so many in other places throughout the world where men, women, and children are suffering persecution for their faith. They share the great honor of the Bishop Ignatius who at the beginning of the second century traveled from Syria to Rome for his execution. We have been spared their awful ordeal, but we all have our part to play in helping Christ carry his cross. Some among us are worn, worn down by illness. Others need the light of the gospel to burn more brightly. And others have lost an awareness of the consecration to God they received in baptism. We have other forces in the West, more social and political in nature, that pressure us to abandon the faith or pay the price of social stigmatization for not doing so. Only the one who can preserve integrity of conscience in such a situation is truly free. Pope Francis offered a reflection on this in his Lenten message this year. Drawing on the example of the ancient Israelites being set free from slavery in Egypt, he speaks about the deeper reality of freedom. He says, the call to freedom is a demanding one. It is not answered straight away. It has to mature as part of a journey. Just as Israel in the desert still clung to Egypt, often looking for the past and grumbling against the Lord and Moses, today too, God's people can cling to an oppressive bondage that it is called to leave behind. We realize how true this is at those moments when we feel hopeless, wandering through life like a desert and lacking a promised land as our destination. Lent is the season of grace in which the desert can become once more, in the words of the prophet Hosea, the place of our first love. God shapes his people. He enables us to leave our slavery behind and experience a Passover from death to life. Like a bridegroom, the Lord draws us once more to himself, whispering words of love to our hearts. The oils which we will soon bless and consecrate 
will be the means by which Christ whispers those words of love to our hearts, equipping us to be capable of the demanding call to freedom. Great spiritual maturity is necessary in order to be truly free. And the one who is, is renewed by Christ to be his light, strength, healing, and consecration for the world. These same oils will be taken to your parishes and other communities of faith, and in many places they will be prominently displayed in your church or chapel. But they avail no one so long as they remain behind glass. We must break the container so that the fragrance of the ointment will fill the whole house. It is by lives poured out in worship of God and service to others that this is done. I invite all of you here this evening, not simply to be witnesses to the blessing and consecration of these oils, but pipelines that will convey the light, the healing, and the joy of God to others. And in this context, it is most appropriate for me to address a special word to my brother priests. My dear priests, your lives are inextricably linked to these oils, for with them you have been consecrated to manifest Christ's presence in a unique way, and with them you in turn anoint his people. This configuration to Christ the priest necessarily entails a special configuration to Christ the victim. For one of the hallmarks of his priestly sacrifice was that he did not offer some other creature a bull or a goat. As you know, he offered himself. I am told that Don Bosco's mother told him on the day of his ordination. I don't know if you remember what your mother or father told you. I don't remember. But it's recorded what Don Bosco's mother told him on his ordination day. To begin to say Mass is to begin to suffer. As we go about our daily lives as priests, we find that our motives are sometimes misunderstood. Our best efforts seem to meet with little success. On our very way of life is considered foolish by many people. Some of our good and faithful pre priests continue to be viciously maligned in public media, in what is an unrelenting campaign to discredit the church. Even if we find it difficult to defend ourselves, we can rejoice that the Lord defends us, as he did the woman who poured the ointment upon him. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for bearing. That is what our priestly ministry entails and all Christian discipleship, to pour ointment on the suffering body of Christ to prepare it for burial. Why this extravagance? Because, and simply because, that is what faith and love are like. For those who believe in Jesus Christ and love him, no gift of ourselves to him can be too much. We share with Ignatius of Antioch this same faith and love which strengthened enlightened and consecrated him on his journey to death. The Lord received anointing on his head in order that he might breathe incorruptibility on the church. And now invite our dear priest to stand for the renewal of your priestly promises. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conform to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties toward Christ's church, which, prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination. 
Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls? And you, my dearest sons and daughters present in this assembly, I ask you, pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. And pray also for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living, a more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, high priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with the brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fide. Mortem tuam annunciamus Domine. Et tuam resurrectionem confitemur. Donec venias. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis of Assisi, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and we are worthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, the deacons and priests of the Archdiocese of San Francisco who have passed away this last year whom you have called from this world to yourself. Deacon Angel Aguilar, Deacon Peter Volwer, Deacon Antonio Paulino, Deacon Juan Ruiz, Deacon George Salinger, Deacon Charles Segrin, Father Edward Bonnert, Monsignor John Coleman, Father Onesto Gile, Monsignor Warren Holleran, Monsignor Labib Copti, Father William McCain, Father Kiernan, McCormick, Father Tuan Nguyen, and Father Robert White. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. O God, Father of all consolation, who will do heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. 
Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this soil in its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this soil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Precepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, au dehemus dicere. Pater nostel, qui es in genis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, arderia prenutum, fiat voluntas tua, Peranos quesimus domine ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in the evus nostris, udope misericordiae tue diuti, et peccato simus semper liberi, et da omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Qui a tuum es renium et potestas, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. The standard procedure for receiving communion in the United States is to stand. If you prefer kneeling to receive the Eucharist, please use the kneelers which will be provided on the side aisles. Justice you love and wickedness you hate. Therefore, God has anointed you with the oil of gladness. Justice you love and wickedness you hate. Therefore, God has anointed you with 
Let us pray. <coughs> we beseech you, almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. O oh God, strength and protection of your people, who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil, and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power, 
they may understand more deeply the gospel of your cross. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian law and made worthy of, of adoption as your sons and daughters. They may rejoice to be born anew and live in your church through Christ our Lord. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this soil, so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. O God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the Church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days, all this has been clearly revealed when every offense is removed through the waters of baptism. The anointing with this oil causes our faces to be joyful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your son Jesus Christ, our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten Son. And you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had, fore had foretold in Saul that the Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your cross. From his holy name it has received the name of chrism, and with it you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and love for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth 
be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly, and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this soil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal life and sharers of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of mercies, who has given you an example of love in the passion of his only begotten Son, grant that by serving God and your neighbor, you may lay hold of the wondrous gift of his blessing. so that you may receive the reward of everlasting life from him, through whose earthly death you believe that you escape eternal death. Amen. And by following the example of his self-abasement, may you possess a share in his resurrection. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you, and remain with you forever. Amen. Go 